Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to Conversations in Children's Health. Um, my name is Shahan Sahikian. I'm the chair of the board of the UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. Uh, but mostly I'm a parent, uh, like many of you, uh, and, uh, and I got involved uh, as a result of being a parent. Um, we try to do these uh, events uh, periodically uh, as, as both a thank you and an invitation to uh, all of you that support the hospital, have supported and continue to support different programs. We really, really thank you for being here and we hope you can take away some interesting tidbits, not only from the little tables you might have visited, but from what you hear this evening. Um, one of the worst things that can happen to anybody is to get that call about your child. And uh, I got that call on January 14th, 1998. Um, my son was diagnosed with uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. He was five and I was in shock. I had no idea what to do next. Um, and as a result, you get brought into this system of care which is overwhelming. And we are so, so fortunate to live in a place that has dedicated pediatric services like Benioff Children's Hospital to care for kids of all types. Today, we're gonna hear about trailblazing uh, me, you know, emergency medicine from two of our great caregivers. Um, we will bring them up here momentarily, but I wanted to just talk a little bit about some of the um, things that are going on uh, in our system. Uh, we, as most of you are aware, have been working on uh, integrating uh, our hot campus in Oakland with the campus here at Mission Bay. Um, bringing physician groups together, bringing research together, thinking about the next hundred years uh, uh, in children's care. This is an amazing time in this nation for what's happening technologically um, and with the way care is being delivered. And we are at the forefront of that and we wanna continue to stay at the forefront of that. We recruit some of the best people in the nation, uh, both in research and, and in caregiving. We also educate the next generation of pediatricians and adult caregivers uh, here at UCSF. Um, I'm excited to say that uh, just a week ago, we opened our new uh, outpatient facility uh, over in Oakland. Uh, we see over a quarter of a million kids a year through that outpatient facility. It is an unbelievable asset. And we are now finally matching the facility to the care that we've been giving for many years <laughs> over in the East Bay. Um, uh, we will hopefully any day now actually start seeing patients in that facility. We're waiting for our final accreditation to occur, uh, which, uh, which could be any day now. And, uh, and we look forward to uh, then moving on with our next phase of work, uh, which is to do renovation in the existing hospital over there. Uh, so thank you again for coming. I, uh, I very much want to um, uh, welcome uh, up to the podium here, uh, Dr. Jackie Group Phelan. Uh, she oversees emergency medicine for pediatrics. Uh, she came here just a year ago or so, but is thrilled to be here. She's a Midwest gal and adjusting to being in this very diverse, complicated, expensive, <laughs> traffic infested <laughs> environment. Uh, but uh, but uh, she, uh, she is a, a wonderful breath of fresh air and she in particular has a focus on uh, mental health in the emergency setting, which she's done a lot of research in and I'm sure she'll touch on that. So uh, Jackie, I welcome you up. His words, not mine. Um, it's really a privilege to be able to talk to you a little bit tonight about why I am so passionate about pediatric emergency medicine 
and how I think that it brings such amazing um, good outcomes to kids uh, who are acutely ill and injured. Um, as many of you might know, the majority of kids are actually seen for emergency care outside of pediatric emergency departments. And um, we know from the uh, evidence base that outcomes in, outside of emer uh, pediatric emergency departments are actually not as good as those that are in emergen pediatric emergency departments. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, why we think that there is a difference in how care is provided. So I'm gonna be talking to you about um, three quick areas because I have about five minutes to sort of talk about this subject that has kept me consumed for the last 25 years of my life. Um, the first thing that really differentiates pediatric emergency care is expertise. And um, as many of you know, um, the physicians, the nurses, the pharmacists, all of the ancillary services in pediatric emergency departments are there because they are trained to take care of children and they're passionate about it. Um, for those of you who have um, been, you know, had, had an opportunity to visit a pediatric emergency department, um, you've probably had one of our physicians take care of you. Um, these physicians are trained in either pediatrics for three years or emergency medicine for three or four years, and they do an additional two or three year pediatric emergency medicine fellowship. So they are truly trained to take care of pediatric emergencies in a way that really uh, differentiates the care that they get. Um, and finally, you know, this care um, is, is important because kids tend to be pretty healthy and resilient. And so you really have to find a needle in a haystack. When a kid comes in with a headache, you have to differentiate the, the 999 migraines out of the one brain tumor. Uh, uh, and you have to figure out a way to um, decide if, uh, ab abdominal pain is constipation and not um, an appendicitis. So it really matters that, that you um, uh, have the appropriate care for that type of thing. So, you know, that matters. Resources matter. In uh, the pediatric emergency department, we are, um, we understand that one size does not fit all and that kids are not small adults. So uh, we have all of the equipment that's necessary for kids of different ages, different sizes. We understand the um, important differences in how we dose kids based on their weight. Um, and so not that this doesn't happen at other places, but it can happen idiosyncratically, and it doesn't always happen in the way that we would want it to. Um, most importantly, if you come to a pediatric hospital like this, uh, we have access to, to all of the pediatric subspecialties. So if we think about ENT or orthopedics or um, neurology, these specialists are all trained in pediatric um, forms of those types of subspecialists, subspecialties. And so this, again, makes a, a very, very big difference. And finally, um, you know, it's okay to stop on your way for some diagnoses on your way to a pediatric subspecialist, but sometimes time really does matter. So um, it's, it is really important that, that we all understand sort of when it's appropriate to go directly to an emergency department that has the level of care that um, is needed. And um, Kareem is gonna be talking about a little bit about that with um, Oakland and trauma. Um, and then finally, the experience. The experience matters. And um, if you've had the opportunity to come into our emergency department, and you are welcome to come and visit us, um, it is a it's a really beautiful place. Um, the the place is welcoming. The people are welcoming. Um, we have a um, a color palette that's that's very um, interesting and stimulating for the kids. And um, you know the. I, I hope that you had a chance to see our child life um, table, but that the, the child life um, experts are are amazing in terms of not just the toys that they bring to the table, but the important distraction, the education that they give the kids right before we're ready to do a procedure. It makes all the difference in terms of pain outcomes being improved, and we know that it has an impact on trauma. Um, after the emergency department vis visit. So it seems like it might not be that important to have a child life person there, but it turns out that it's incredibly important. And that's just one example of um, the, you know, the important things that come with an emergency department visit when you're in a pediatric center. Um, finally, uh, next slide. Um, just uh, one other thing I think that we think about 
a lot in the pediatric emergency department setting is that there's more about the visit than just the chief complaint that the child comes in with. We're really interested in what happens before they come to the emergency department. We're very interested in what happens after they leave the emergency department. So um, we are interested in screening. My, per, my area that Shahan talked about is mental health screening. I do suicide screening and um, interventions. But we want to understand, is there something about this kid or this family that might be getting in the way of delivering good care for them? And that's, that's we think very holistically about our, our kids um, coming to the ED. Um, finally, you all know that we are the safety net for the community. So if the ED, the ED is open up 20, open 24 seven, we are the place for kids that can't get care anywhere else. Mental health problems, acute injuries, you name it, we're open and, and no, there's all, the door is always open. We never close the doors to our kids. And, and uh, this is important because we are sort of the, we can sort of see right at the beginning when something important is happening, whether it's the vaping issue that's going on in teens or whether it's, you know, we, we know that the flu epidemic is really bad before the whole country knows that the flu, is epi flu epidemic is bad because we're taking care of these kids and we're seeing it at, at first glance. So um, these are really important um, uh, things that we do it, for our community. And finally, um, my own um, passion is um, research um, in the pediatric emergency department and how it's an amazing um, population to try to figure out ways of improving care. And so um, what we will be, what we are doing right now is building great infrastructure at, at San Francisco and Oakland's emergency department to be able to find, uh, innovate on care in the emergency department and um, make sure that we're translating that knowledge to our populations and disseminating that, disseminating that across the country. So, you know, the bottom line is, is that we definitely want to change the outcomes for the kids that we serve. And unless we're willing to innovate and get that knowledge out there, we won't be able to move the needle um, where kids are really getting their care, which is in all sorts of settings. So. I really wanted to thank everybody, and um, I'm going to let Shahan come up and um, introduce Kareem. Thank you, Jackie. Um, before I introduce Kareem, uh, I do want to give you the end of the story about <clears throat> when I heard about my child getting sick. He's now 25 years old, graduating from medical school and about to start a residency in anesthesiology. So um, thanks to the care uh, that was given to him both in the UK where we lived at the time and here as a continuity of care matter, um, he's a healthy, healthy uh, young man. And uh, we're, uh, we're thrilled and excited and we learned a lot along the way. Um, as, uh, as Jackie mentioned, um, Kareem is going to come up next. He did his fellowship uh, at Oakland in pediatric emergency medicine and uh, decided to stick around, uh, thankfully. Now runs the fellowship program there. Uh, so uh, we are happy to have that kind of continuity. Uh, there are uh, roughly 50,000 kids that transit through the emergency department every year um, in Oakland and another 15 or 20,000 over here. So. We see a lot of children with every possible uh, type of disease, uh, and a large portion of those, it's the gateway into the hospital uh, for the exact reasons that Jackie mentioned. So I would like to welcome Dr. Mansoor up. Thank you very much. Thank you for that kind introduction, Shahan. Uh, I, too, would like to thank uh, all of you for being here tonight. Many of you are previous donors to our children's hospitals, and if not for the generosity of people just like yourself, I literally would not be standing here tonight before you. I am the perfect example of that kindness. Let me explain. So I first came to the Bay Area in 2003 to do my training in pediatric emergency medicine. Now, just to give you a little bird's eye view of what it takes to be a pediatric emergency medicine doctor, just kind of like what Jackie had mentioned. You do four years of college, four years of medical school, three years of residency training, which is usually in pediatrics, but could also be in emergency medicine, 
and then an additional three years in fellowship, which is subspecialty training. Now, I did my fellowship training in pediatric emergency medicine at Children's Hospital in Oakland. Now, around that time, there was very little institutional funding to support a training program in pediatric emergency medicine until one night a family from Marin came to the emergency department in Oakland and they brought their daughter who had just suffered an injury to her elbow. And you can imagine how concerned they were when every time she tried to move it, she would cry out in pain. They didn't know if it was broken, they didn't know if she needed a cast, or worse, was she gonna need an operation. They were helpless. And probably at one of the most vulnerable points that they can remember. And all they could do was wait. But shortly after they arrived, they were greeted by a pediatric emergency medicine physician, who is a former mentor of mine and a dear friend who's since passed away. But his demeanor and his calmness almost immediately allayed all of their concerns and fears. He diagnosed their daughter with something called a radial head subluxation which is otherwise known as a nursemaid's elbow. It's not that serious of an injury, actually, and it's quite common. And after a bit of distraction, he effortlessly and so swiftly performed a maneuver, and within minutes, she had full function, full range of her elbow without any pain. The parents were amazed. It was like magic and they were so grateful. Not just because their daughter's arm was better, but because how fortunate were they to be able to come to a dedicated pediatric emergency department and be seen by a physician who was trained to see children almost exclusively. Well, that gratefulness turned into an incredibly generous donation that was dedicated to train even more pediatric emergency medicine physicians. Like me. <laughs> and I like to think and I like to say that I was the first fellow to ever benefit from that gift. The truth is I was the second. <laughs> but nonetheless, it was donor generosity that literally paved the way for my entire career. And not only that, but it set the foundation for what the fellowship program is today. Our fellowship started, it was conceived in 1987. And since then, we've graduated over 30 fellows who are literally taking care of children all over the world. We currently have four fellows, and we have 28 pediatric emergency medicine board certified faculty that are responsible for their education. Our fellows have the unique opportunity to be a part of a program that is comprised of two nationally recognized pediatric tertiary care centers, one in Oakland, one here in San Francisco, with dedicated pediatric emergency departments. By combining a high volume, high acuity, community focused urban children's hospital with a university-based medical center rich in educational, clinical, and investigational resources, our fellows get opportunities that a lot of programs in this country can't afford. For example, one of the um, unique qualities about our Oakland site is we've been given the designation of, it's a bit of a mouthful, American College of Surgeons certified level one pediatric trauma center. We're one of five in the state of California and we're one of 44 in the entire country. It is an incredible accomplishment. Well, what does it mean to be a level one certified tr pediatric trauma center? It means that we can, we are committed to and are capable of providing total care for the injured child. We have dedicated, trained personnel 
we have resources, and we have the volume and acuity of patients that allow us to do that. Everything from injury prevention all the way to rehabilitation. And our fellows get to experience that. Not many fellows out there do. We're also a regional referral center. We have a catchment radius of about 500 miles. We see kids from Eureka all the way down to Bakersfield. We have patients that are flown in from other states. All together, like Shahan had mentioned, we see about 65,000 cases per year. Everything from ear pain to cardiac arrest. And our fellows are on the forefront of delivering that care. They get a clinical experience unlike any other that will allow them to see and treat anything that comes through our doors. But we're not just here to train good doctors. We want our fellows to be leaders in pediatric emergency medicine. You heard Dr. Grupp Phelan talk a little bit about one of our missions, which is research, innovation, trailblazing. We want our fellows to be leaders in the field of pediatric emergency medicine locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally. They get research experience and they participate and spearhead research projects that include areas of alternative pain management, teen reproductive health, the use of technology in making diagnostic decisions. We are on the forefront of concussion therapies. These are all projects that our fellows are doing currently. They're answering important questions that will change the way we practice and treat kids today. But what it's also doing is it's serving as a launch pad for their careers. Our fellows will graduate from our program and go on and become experts in areas of interest. And they'll be leaders. People will refer to them and ask them questions about certain areas of pediatric emergency care. And that's the type of program that we're trying to build. I am so incredibly proud of the program that we have built since I've been here. I'm a little biased, but I think we're one of the best programs in the country. And I have a lot to back that up. But we're not done. We're never done. We should always be pushing the envelope, challenging conventional therapies, you know, trailblazing care for not only our kids locally, but all over the world. By training the future of pediatric emergency medicine, we have an important responsibility to provide the education and the tools that our graduates need to go out there in the real world to other hospitals where they're not children's hospitals and they don't have all the resources and the luxuries that we have, but they have the personnel with the knowledge and the training that will allow them to care for children the way they should be. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you for your past generosity and for even entertaining being part of our future. Appreciate it. So he's sort of passionate, uh, <laughs> kind of. Uh, you see this over and over, and it's one of the most wonderful things about a children's hospital is the incredible passion that people have. Uh, up and down the chain, it doesn't matter what area you're in, whether you're a physician, whether you're a nurse, or you're someone in the cafeteria, it, 
it is a different vibe, it is a special place, and it's all about nurturing and healing. And that's the wonderful thing about being in a children's hospital. Um, so we've heard from two physicians. We were hoping to hear in person from a mom. Uh, unfortunately, uh, she was injured herself and uh, unable to be here in person uh, because she needed surgery. Luckily, we have a video and uh, she's going to talk to you about her experience with her son, Tanner. Tanner um, was looking for me and he was leaning out his window and all of a sudden I heard a screen breakthrough and the next thing I knew I was watching him fall two stories onto a wooden deck. And we went to the ER and one look at him and they said, we're gonna send you to Oakland Children's because we don't have a trauma ward here. And when we got to Oakland, um, we knew that he was pretty badly injured because we were in a pediatric trauma ward and they started assessing his injuries. And right away I met an excellent trauma doctor and he told me that you're gonna be here for a long time but we're gonna take good care of you. And he really kind of just put me at ease and I was just then waiting to hear sort of what the prognosis for Tanner was. And so he sustained a skull fracture that was pretty significant from his orbital socket up to the top of his skull and he um, had a very severe concussion that the trauma doctor explained to me would be sort of like two NFL football players running head on into each other without helmets. They said to me, this is a little bit worse than we thought and so we're gonna have to operate. He had compound fractures in both arms and that's where we were for several days in the hospital with Tanner. Something that happens when you're in a, in a ward like the pediatric trauma ward is you do connect with other families because you're all there for a long time. You're there kind of seeing the worst of each other and you kind of form this unique bond with people that are completely different than you are. All kinds of people are there obviously and they're all in a rough place and it, it was nice to connect and meet those other parents on the ward. This one woman um, in the the bed next to Tanner, there was a little boy who was about the same age and he had had surgery that had resulted in a pretty severe infection. And she was a working parent. She told me, I have three jobs. She couldn't even be at the hospital with him a lot of the time and that was really hard on her. And then one night she basically told me, I don't know how I'm gonna pay for this. And I said, but you know what? What's amazing is they're taking good care of him even though you're not sure how you're gonna pay for this. Just focus on the good care he's getting despite your worry. And I don't know whatever happened with that family, but I do know that he got the same care that Tanner got and that the, the idea that this family may not be able to pay their bill or didn't have insurance wasn't even a thought in those nurses and doctors' mind. They just tended to him in the same amazing way they tended to my son. Tanner is an exuberant, vibrant little guy. He is active, he's very social, he loves his friends, he loves school, he's a great little learner, and he's just a really busy, happy nine-year-old boy. I'm a third grade teacher. I've taught third, fourth, and fifth grade for 25 years. And one of the things that I love about my job is that I get to see so much growth in kids and so much positive interactions all day long. That's mostly what I deal with. Of course, some kids have a hard time at school, but for the most part, I work with kids at their very best. Their kids put their best selves forward at school every day. And I'm really lucky and grateful that I get to do that kind of work. In the hospital, what really struck me was these are kids that are really sick. They're really injured, <clears throat> they're in a lot of pain, they're really their worst selves here. And the doctors and nurses had to ask them to do things that are uncomfortable, that are scary, that hurt, and they could do it so well. <laughs> and I just, I take my hat off to people that can get the best out of kids when they are really having their worst day, probably of their whole life. And they kept their spirits positive, they just were so gentle and so um, thoughtful in the way that they spoke to the kids. The doctors and nurses were really nice to me and they really cared. And if I, if I, that was, 
and if I could go to any hospital, I would probably go to there because they're so nice. Thoughts about the hospital uh, and, uh, or something that's, uh, that's been bugging you about the way children are cared for? Any? Well, first, let me say that um, the mom is actually absolutely on my domain as well because we take care of families. So it's really important to me that the family's experience is good. Um, it's really hard when there's a frequent flyer um, because they've had the previous experience. So we're very, very careful. For example, if somebody comes in um, for multiple abscesses, um, which is a, a boil basically, very painful, we're very careful to um, use sedation fairly freely so that they don't remember what's going on. Um, we're, we're more likely to um, make sure to start um, uh, an anti-anxiolytic, something to calm them down earlier. Um, so we really do take into consideration um, when there's been a previous exposure to trauma in the emergency, or to pain in the emergency department. But it's also important to think about what happens once they go home. And some of the kids who have um, pretty significant experiences in the ED do need to have um, some counseling sessions to, sort of, to get them sort of through um, the issues that related to that and to prepare them if they're going to be coming back again um, if, they are, if they do have a medical problem that requires a lot of um, repeat visits. So uh, very challenging, but we do tend to be um, fairly um, conservative in terms of making sure that they're that we're talking through everything that's going on that they understand what the next steps are they like to be in control of the situation and you've got to give them an opportunity to be able to do that so. other questions sharing um, both of your backgrounds. Um, can you tell us more about what, um, talk to little, touch a little bit about like, what your um, your best work is. Can you tell us a little about what you're most proud of and then what do you think is the biggest opportunity and how us as community members or donors can kind of take you to the next level, take the ED to the next level? Let's see, so multi-tier question. So I think um, what I'm most proud of is that it's a tremendous privilege to care for a child. Um, but like Jackie had mentioned, um, we care for the whole family. You, we are put in a situation where we have to take care of a patient who is at their most vulnerable moment. And it is the parent's most prized possession. To, be, to do that, you have to be able to establish rapport with the child and the family in a very hostile environment for them, one that's filled with uncertainty, and they don't know who you are, they don't know what your intention is, and you have to be able to create the environment for them that's safe, that's comfortable, and to do that, it's, and to be given that charge is a tremendous honor. As soon as you accomplish it, it's an amazing feeling. It makes you want to get up every day and go to work. To see the, the benefit of all those years of training that we go through, in a smile or just a nod of gratification makes it all worthwhile. Areas that I think our community can help with is that our population of children 
really are still a added disparity. Um, whether it be from a payment perspective, insurance, uh, whether you're in an inner city um, underprivileged community where you have very little resource, our children are victims in that regard. And we need to bring to light that there is an inequity of care for children still today in 2018. Now, we're very fortunate being in this very progressive urban community where we have members that are committed to our children's care, but it's not like that all over the country. We have to advocate for those kids too. We have to be find a way to reach them. That's where the training program becomes really important to me. I want my graduates of our fellowship program to get out to those areas where those kids need us, where they don't have people that are trained to care for them. And we need to foster the resources and the platforms for us to be able to do that, I think. If I could just add to that. Um, seeing patients and um, educating families and making a difference, changing the outcome, that is what drives me every day. That's what informs the research program that I've been involved with. Um, and I think that you asked sort of what, what is the thing that I'm most proud of. And I would say for me, um, understanding that we can impact lives even outside of what brings a kid to the emergency department for the chief complaint that they come for is, is super important. And in my case, as, I, as we talked about, um, I'm interested in um, mental health um, screening and interventions. And so I think that um, that is a way, you know, California is, is particularly challenged with um, mental health services. And um, my vision for the community is to provide better um, care when they come to the emergency department and to help get them into care that's available for them once they leave in the, in the mental health realm as well. Um, so I think that if, if, you know, if we had an impact, in, that would be a huge impact if we were able to contribute in that way. The other thing is sort of um, go, goes outside of our community a little bit, and that's that um, we have expertise in global health as well. There is um, amazing um, talent that we have to bring pediatric mental to pediatric um, emergency services to um, the global community, and um, we've been doing that in Malawi, in Botswana, and in other areas. So that's a um, global health is something that is very challenging to get grant funding for. There's very limited funding in the United States, so we've been working really hard with um, philanthropy to try to. Um, uh, figure out funds for our incredibly talented faculty to contribute in those areas as well, bringing the expertise of the care at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital to the world. So I would say that that's another area because it's so challenging. I can get funding at the NIH when I try hard, but it's really challenging to get funding in the, in, uh, the global health area. So those are two areas that we are hugely talented in and, and that I think could be use very, very useful. Uh, yeah. This is a rather unique situation to have two world-class children's hospitals in a single metropolitan area under one university. I don't know if this exists anywhere else in the United States or the world for that matter. But my question, both hospitals have lots of wonderful people, but each have some particular strengths. And how you're handling the sharing of faculty and the switching of patients depending on the need. I'm happy to yeah, and then I'm happy to talk about that a little bit. <laughs> so, um, so we have, uh, as you say, we have uh, an embarrassment of riches in terms of the, the quality of care and the, and the sites that we have to deliver it. Uh, we are in a slow and methodical process of, of integrating uh, clinical practice areas. Uh, it's not something you can do one by one or over, you know, just in, in one fell swoop. You, you have to do it one by one. And it's and it's take it's been going on now for some time. We are not done by any means. It will still go on for another couple of years. Um, we have depth in certain areas on one side of the bay versus the other. But there are um, 
uh, patients that need uh, a huge number of those specialty areas on both sides of the bay and there's enough volume to provide those services in, in both locations. Um, there, the, the unique aspects of those uh, different lines of care uh, are being considered as we go through that, but, uh, but it is one by one and we have integrated uh, a number of specialties like cardiology and uh, rehabilitation medicine and orthopedics and, and a variety of them and many of those date back to even prior to when this affiliation between the two campuses occurred. Um, uh, you add to that uh, the entire research arm, we are still going through that process as well and you know we happen to be sitting very close to the number one grant recipient in the country from the NIH uh, for research and it's an extraordinary institution. Uh, we have very talented researchers in specialty areas across the Bay in Oakland as well. How that all comes together is still under discussion, but our goal is to create one children's enterprise with two campuses that you can enter with a phone call and be routed to the best place for that care to be delivered. And uh, that's going to continue to take us some time, uh, but uh, we are marching down that path. And I'd just like to add that um, our vision is that when you walk into the emergency department at any of the UCSF facilities, the pediatric emergency department, that you're getting the same care. It might look a little different depending on what door you're walking into, but that you can expect the same amazing care. And um, we already are starting to standardize the care. Our groups are um, highly, we've already been collegial and we've been working together already because we share a fellowship together. We, we are incredibly complementary in terms of our two groups. So I personally think that the sky's the limit, uh, especially with our group, our two groups. And um, I am really excited to see uh, what the expertise that the East Bay and the West Bay, what they can do together is really going to be something. I'll add one last thing, but I, I think I'll, I'll kind of echo what you said in your question, which is I do think that there are strengths and weaknesses at both institutions, and I think we complement each other very, very well. And um, to use the fellowship as an example, um, very early on after the affiliation was made, we recognize the benefit of a shared collaborative effort to create the best opportunities for our fellows. And so we were able to gap fill areas where you know, we were um, less strong in, but we were also able to facilitate research endeavors because we have a large volume of patients. So I think the, the, the complementary aspects of this are, are clear and obvious, and it's just going to be a matter of how we navigate some of the details. But when you distill it down to the very bare bones, we're all here for one thing. And to use a phrase that my colleague, Dr. Kevin Whitelaw, mentions, if we put the patient at the top of the pyramid, we're always going to get it right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as um, physicians in the emergency department, can you speak to the importance and the impacts and also perhaps the obstacles of um, collaborating with other members of the multidisciplinary team, such as child, child life specialists? Well, I, um, the, the only obstacle of collaborating with child life is when they're not there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I cannot, I mean, I, I, the care that we give is, mul is always inter is interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary. We are a team. There's no, um, there's no hierarchy in the emergency department. It is a team. And I will say that um, this, th our team here, and I, I hope you all had a chance to go by and see um, the amazing, our amazing nursing leadership and, and the, um, the uh, fun um, imaging that we had with the ultrasound and, and of course the child life table, which was of course that drew the biggest crowd. Um, but I, I really think that we couldn't do what we do without 
our partners without the whole team uh, pulling together in the same way. So I don't find it a bit challenging. I mean, the only, the only, honestly, the only issue is when w we think everybody, sh everybody in the ED should get a child life person at every moment. So it can get, it can get like there's just not enough capacity sometimes. But but we're really, really lucky to have that that group of people and to count on our nurses who who check us if we're not thinking about something and to constantly being open to thinking about things differently and and thinking about our kids and making sure that we're we are not forgetting something um, so it is a team experience and I, I mean I, I could not do it without the team I would, I would just echo that I think um, we all embody the multidisciplinary approach to care I think that's inherent to pediatrics. And um, I think we all recognize that we have a role, and this isn't about any hierarchy. Nobody is any more important or less important than somebody else. We just have a different job description. And I think we're all cogs in the big wheel of care. and. From my experience, and I've been doing this fairly a long time now, and it's primarily one of the reasons I stayed um, in the Bay Area and at, at Children's is because of the people sitting right next to me and the people I get to work with. Um, we establish personal and professional relationships that um, allow us to actually deliver the care that we want to give. We rely on one another so much. And um, if that gets disrupted, then the whole machine gets disrupted. Planted question. Hi, my name is Kevin White, I've been uh, ER attending at uh, the Children's Hospital in Oakland for 28 years now. And I just wanted to uh, emphasize uh, what they're saying about our multidisciplinary approach and our dedication to things like child life. Is a uh, foundation recently came to one of our staff meetings and our 14 faculty members were there and they asked us, you know, we'd like to put some more money in the ER, you know, what would you like? You know, they were talking about whether it was, you know, uh, more ultrasound equipment, they had several suggestions. And we kept saying, we want another child life, uh, you know, person. And they're like, well, okay, that's great, but how about, you know, they suggest something else, you go, no, we want another child life person. <laughs> and it, there is absolutely you know, no conversation about anything else except adding more child life to what we do. So it's a very important part of what, we, what we're all about. Or continued support for Maddie. Or Maddie <laughs> yeah. here, who you've seen at the table, she is our dedicated child life um, uh, person in, in our emergency department. And it is a different existence when you are there. So thank you for the work that you do. And I would just add that I know Maddie and others are supported by um, philanthropy. So that's, uh, and it's the same yes. for our um, child life person at the um, uh, general hospital. So um, hugely important to have that support. And, and people think it's discretionary, but I think you can hear that we don't think it is. So. <laughs> So I'm going to cover up my Benioff Children's Hospital badge and ask a question as a mom instead. Um, one of the areas that you mentioned is uh, underway in research is concussions. And as we all try to make decisions for our kids and wish they wore helmets, you know, 100% of the time even walking down the street, uh, what are you seeing in the emergency department right now and how do you think that will continue to change? Well, um as everybody knows, it is agenda item number one for any parent who has a kid who wants to play football. Um, it's a hot topic in professional sports. It's a hot topic in Hollywood, right? So it's definitely on the front lines. Um, the institution is in the process of developing a multidisciplinary approach to having a neurocritical care center of excellence. And we have champions in the emergency department, champions in trauma, champions in sports medicine, 
and in neurosurgery, all working together to develop tools for assessment. We have fellows doing research, exploring treatment options. So we are on the forefront of this because the reality is, is if anybody tells you they know about concussions in children, they're lying. Nobody knows. We have experience. We have anecdotal evidence to help guide us in the right direction, but we need more information. Mm -hmm. We need the right infrastructure to allow us to study it and study it properly. And I think we're uh, at the forefront of that right now. So hopefully, ask me that question <coughs> 10 years from now, and I'll have a better answer. Sounds like a funding opportunity. To yeah. <laughs> uh, other questions? OK, hearing, hearing none, thank you all again for, uh, for participating. Thank you, Dr. Mansour, Dr. Grub Fillon, for, for all your input and all of what you do every day, which is even more important. <laughs> and um, there are. Oh, sorry. Uh, in the back of the room, I see there's dessert and there's still wine and coffee and those sorts of things. Uh, I do want to say thank you again to all the donors in the room. And, uh, and there are many, many opportunities, as you've heard some of today. Um, there are opportunities in research, in uh, clinical medicine, in, in various different types of programs, and a huge push in uh, health equity. Uh, we live in a, in a highly disparate community, as uh, Dr. Mansour pointed out. Um, we see tens of thousands of kids uh, every year uh, that um, don't have the kind of access uh, that we would like to give them. We do whatever we can, but anything we can do to improve uh, that and get after them earlier and provide the services that aren't provided uh, that's what we're here to do. We want to care for all children in this community and beyond um, and maintain that for the, for the next hundred years. So uh, thanks again for coming and feel free to mingle uh, for a while uh, afterwards. <laughs>